Welcome to the Steve Show. Today I have Connie Podesta. Hi. Did I do it? <laughs> yes. I'm Italian and I got to make sure that I say her name right. And what we're going to talk about is the three relationships that are so important in your life that you actually gain at an early age. And guess what? They're not people. And let's, let's learn more about that. Yeah, let's learn more about that. <laughs> Um, I guess what I'm most curious about is like where you are now being a successful speaker and just just the start is you know how you're living the life that you want and as we talk just off a of camera it's mm -hmm. like a, it's a journey like it's not oh. you know we're all the way there ever right? right we just keep going but maybe just share a little about that how, how you're choosing to live now well I'm definitely not living the life I want okay all right because I think part of humans and part of growing and part of the psychology of our behavior is that what keeps us going is that we never ever have quite what we want and I think once we do then life gets kind of boring and get kind of dull so every time I start to get complacent with something and like I have everything I want then I kind of force myself to say oh what about this and what about that so I'm a little bit different I kind of like living on the edge of what I want okay. always kind of wanting to know what's next yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's beautiful. And was it always this way, or did? Oh yeah. Okay, so yeah. there wasn't a time that you didn't live right. that way. Right. And and I do a whole uh, talk, and, and and I'm a therapist, so I work with a lot of coaching and counseling people, and and I always say, you know, have you ever heard speakers talk about accept yourself as who you are, just mm -hmm. accept? You. Right. And I always say no. I mean, I have never once accepted myself as is. Now, I love myself. I'm kind to myself. I definitely try to forgive myself, but. I think when people just wake up and say, I accept myself as I am, then you're never going to be healthier and you're never going to be smarter and you're never going to be uh, more uh, risk taking. Right. So I encourage people to take care of yourself, be good to yourself, but wake up every morning and say, I don't accept that this is the smartest I can be and I don't accept that this is the healthiest I can be and I don't accept that this is the best I can be. And, and when you stop accepting where you are now, then you've got something to live for all day. Right, yeah, to go. And you know, I think, you know, one, tw for me, my belief, and it's just a slight twist to it, is that I choose to have gratitude with what I do mm -hmm. have. Because I can look back and say where I didn't have what I have now, and then that helps propel well, me. Well, that's part of the, be you're being yeah. kind to yourself. There, thank you. You're being grateful to yourself. Yep. You're forgiving yourself and loving yourself. All of those are there. Done. I'm not angry or regretful or giving myself negative feedback, but yeah, in gratitude, in love, in kindness, I still wake up every morning and go, okay, this isn't all there is. Yeah, what's next? There's, there's a lot more than this. Which so, is beautiful. Um, yeah. yeah, I get it. That makes, and we're sort of saying the same thing with different words, <laughs> right, which is beautiful. Right. And that's actually the whole purpose of this is because I can share with my audience all the time what I say, mm -hmm. but it's great to have other perspective and see, oh wow, mm -hmm. there's more people doing things like this. Oh, and there's a slight twist to it and this, you know, so well, it's beautiful. Well, again, as a therapist, a lot of people who voice this, I just accept myself as I am, I found as I would dig deeper, they're really settling. And settling is probably one of the biggest destroyers of, of human energy and human development because when you settle, this is the best partner I can have. This is the most money I can make. This is as healthy as I can be. When you settle and you start making excuses, then you end up with things that you don't want. Right. So when you ask me if I'm living the life I want, I'm not because there's still a few things I'm settling for at this point because I'm not ready for it or I don't have the time for it. So I'm settling for what's here, not angry or whatever, I'm, that's where I'm at. But I know behind me that one day I'm going to wake up and I'm not going to settle for that anymore and I'm going to have the time and energy to go after it. Makes total sense. I mean, I've been in business for 52 years. Wow, well, yeah. So I'm lots older than you. Yeah, just and, a few. and my life has taken a lot of changes and turns and you know uh, I work with a lot of people now who are older like I am and they're settling for the fact that you know I've heard them say oh you know at my age I can't do this and at my age I can't do that right. and I'm the opposite I'm like at my age I'm gonna prove all of you wrong right. you know I'm gonna prove I still have 20 years I'm gonna prove that everything you say about age is wrong right. that's beautiful keep doing that <laughs> 
Uh, you know, one thing, that the best advice that I was given as a parent, I say it all the time, but I want this repeated, is become who you want your children to be. Mm -hmm. And I look at that as a leader, mm -hmm. and that's what you're doing right now. You're saying, I'm going to show you what right. I can do, and other people are going to watch right. you more than listen to you. Right. So, so. As, so keep doing it. That's well, awesome. thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. And so how, how long have you been, so you speak and teach on this. This is the, your subject matter, or um, is, it, is it? My number one topic is life would be easy if it weren't for other people. Okay. And it's been great. I mean, it's been a 40-year awesome topic because when you think about it, for most people, like when people will come in for therapy or coaching right. or counseling, really, no matter what they originally said was their problem, it boiled down to somebody. You know, my parents never love me. My spouse drives me crazy. My kids don't appreciate me. Right. My boss doesn't listen to me. And so I think most people, as they go through life, it's always about someone else. I'm not happy because this person doesn't understand me. This person won't love me enough. This person doesn't recognize who I am, this person. And so the life would be easy if it weren't for other people is a little tongue in cheek because that gets people in the door. Everyone's right. like, oh my God, that is so true. Yep. But then when they get in the door, I don't really talk about other people. Yeah, because it's really blaming. It, well, I really talk about energy. them. You right. know, you're the, you're the one that's getting in your own way. So I work with pretty top companies, but even with them, it's like, let's talk about sales, but let's talk about, not about why the economy's bad or why the price is too high or why the product isn't what they need. Let's talk about what it is you're doing that's not closing the deal. Or if I talk to leaders, it's about the same thing. You know, they're saying, well, the millennials don't work and the baby boomers have already checked out and the so-and-so, and I go, okay, but instead of keep focusing on everyone else, that's the excuse we would like to give, Let's just take a look at what are you doing to engage millennials? What are you saying to baby boomers? What's happening? So I guess I really talk about personal accountability. Yeah. <laughs> really, I mean, you know, one thing I say, you know, a lot of people say time is the most valuable thing, but I think it's actually energy. And when you're actually putting, projecting on other right. people, mm -hmm. like, oh, it's their fault, it's this thing's mm -hmm. fault, you're actually giving your energy away. Right. You're like, oh, here. Right. And then, but wait, and that's what I love. But it's you're easier. Doing. You're bringing it back in. You're it, saying, to keep it for you. It is easier because they're just this, it, it, bringing it in, holding it in. Because if you and I were you married, have to take responsibility. if we were married and, and the marriage isn't going right, it's far easier mentally, physically, everything for me to say it's you. Right. You know, you're not home enough. You don't right. talk to me enough. You don't show love enough. You aren't, by, because once I stop that, the only thing left to me is to look at me. You know, what am I doing to deserve more attention? What am I doing to love back? What am I doing to, and, and that's the hardest thing about coaching and counseling and therapy is getting people to the place that they trust you enough to, to dig deep, but they also trust themselves enough to be vulnerable enough to say, okay, all right, okay, if I don't talk about my parents and I don't talk about my spouse, I don't talk about my boss, now I have to talk about me, okay. and that's the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. But once you get them to that point, like the world can open up. It's amazing. It's, yeah, it's like the song, um, I forget the woman's name right now, but I met her. She wrote Man in the Mirror. Oh, okay. Michael yes, Jackson. yes. And, that, and that's an uh, interesting story mm -hmm. because Michael Jackson said that he wrote all the songs. Right. And he told her that too, and she said, No, this is I my song. I wrote that one, yeah. And, and then he said, Okay, co writer. Yeah. She said, No, no it's this my is song. Mine. And he finally can see, consented yeah. to it. Well, he and needed to look at the man in the mirror when he right? was Isn't telling that, that story, right? Isn't it interesting? <laughs> right. And she speaks and talks uh -huh. that story. Mm -hmm. I don't think a whole mm -hmm. lot, but I've seen her. Right, once. interesting. And but I'm just thinking that mm -hmm. the whole time you're saying this, it's, mm -hmm. the, it's the man or the woman in the mirror that that mm -hmm. that's what's left is, is you. Well, and and you're right; it is the scariest thing. It's hard. Um, people as children. Well, I guess we'll go here and see. It, you know, people as children. There's three relationships that most of us developed as kids that impact every single decision we make the rest of our life. Yeah. Do you know what those are? Um, well, I want to think, and it's that nope. It's not have is not anything to do with people. Oh, okay. And so, what was it? So three things. Mm -hmm. Three relationships. Oh, relationships. That most of us developed in childhood that that affect and impact every other decision we make. The hmm. first one. Yeah, go for it, because I'm going to guess. Is our relationship to money? Okay. Huge. 
Right. Huge for most people. I mean, for most people I coach or counsel, this is a big one. So most of us grew up, and, and we grew up in a home where we either heard money is amazing and awesome and you can do so much with it, or you know what, we don't have much money, but we're really loving people, or we don't have much money, but we're a good family. Right. Well, if you grew up hearing we don't have much money, but we're good and loving, then what does that make you think about someone yeah. who makes money? Well, and I can tell you right now, mine is, a, oh yeah, we have to work really, really hard for money. And, yeah. we, and we have to mm -hmm. keep working to have money. If we don't, if we stop working, we don't have right. money anymore. So that's going to take a little bit, which it didn't, which obviously. I changed, no, well, your, I did a well, you lot changed of work. the message. Um, because if that's what you grew up believing, then you wouldn't have ever been an entrepreneur because you were taught work, 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 work. Don't, don't take off. Don't work yeah. for yourself. Don't take risks. And so well, I, I just to shed in it because this goes metaphor for mm -hmm. what you're talking mm -hmm. about. Well, and it's a real life story is I ended up figuring out because I saw my dad struggle so much. I figured out how to do business mm -hmm. and I did make millions in my mm -hmm. 20s, but I lost it all. Okay. And I, and I look at it as self-sabotage. I right. had to lose all that. If I kept right. that millions, I wouldn't have had to work. No. And, it, you, know, and it, you grew up. The minute you stop working, there will be no money. Right. So, and so I had to lose it all. You had to lose it all. So. You can, so that I, relationship I, I is huge. Yeah. And the problem with marriage, most marriages, is we generally have two people that each got a different message. So the odds are really good that one person in the marriage got the message, you know, work, 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 and if you stop working, and so their intensity is towards work, and they marry a person who's like, you know what? The most important thing is life is love and being with you, and now you, you have a problem. And people say, you know, well, Connie, isn't one of the most problems in marriage and life communication? No, they're just, they're, com they're not communicating about money. Yeah. And then the second relationship, you want to take a guess? Uh, love? Food. Food. I was going to say food. That was the first thing I said And when money, I do this, most people are like, oh, what? No, that has nothing to do with my job and my, well, but your relationship with food, most of us in this country, at least, either undereat or overeat. Very seldom is there someone in the middle. And food for us represents a lot, you know. Uh, it's a control issue whether we're overeating or undereating. But food is, is broader than that. Food is your relationship to health. Right. And food is your relationship to the love for your body. Food goes far deeper. So how we treat food, either as a comfort, right. uh, you know, I, I'm not getting love, but I can eat. You know, uh, or do we treat it as just subs, uh, you know, substance and, and we don't want to think about it or enjoy it? And again, in marriage often or friendships, you've got the two, you know, the one that wants to be healthy and they want to eat right and there's no carbs and there's no this and they're eating, the other one that grew up in an Italian family and food yeah. was their social, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, so we, you we know that. We fix everything right? with food. Yeah, yeah. oh, <laughs> right. you're not okay, right. oh, let's eat some manja, right. manja, yeah. Right, so those two relationships <laughs> are huge. So. By the time we're 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, we have definite ideas about money, and either it's good or it's bad, or I need it or I don't, or whatever. We have relationships to food and our bodies and health. What, was it something that the, come, brought the family together? Was it mom always did it, so therefore she loved me? And then the third... Is love. No? It's intimacy. Okay. Which is different Close, than love. Different. Yes. Okay. Intimacy is really defined psychologically is if, if you were a person that was able to be intimate, it's two parts. One is you are a person who's capable of loving, meaning that you are a person through your grown up years, you are capable and able to love, which means you trust people. You don't think they're going to betray you or fool around on you. You believe what they say. Um, you're, you're able to love and not be afraid. Right. So you give totally. But the second part is you're also able to be loved, right. which is totally different. Yeah. There's a lot of people who can do one of those and not the other. You know, they can love, love everybody, but they're emotionally distant. They can't accept it. So that person never feels that they can give it. And then there's the people who can accept it, you know, but they... Can't they can't trust you and they're going to be jealous and question everything. So when you think of those three things and you think of every relationship in your life, and then let's take it into work because your, your question, it's really the question beneath the question. Your question is, you know, are you living the life you want? 
Well, that's a day by day, minute by minute answer. Right. Like right now, this is great. I mean, I, I love being on TV and love talking to you. Um, an hour and a half ago, I was in a situation where it wasn't what I wanted at all. Yeah. Well, so luckily you had to come up here. I had to come up here. <laughs> you got out. But I do think psychologically, a lot of people are very unhappy, resorting to drugs, or alcohol, whatever, because we are teaching people, especially our kids, that they should live their passion, do what they love, and live the life they want. Well, the real truth, at least from me, the real truth is we should be teaching our kids life sometimes is awesome and passionate and sometimes it's gonna suck, deal with it. And sometimes you're gonna get what you want and it's great and put a smile on your face and sometimes you know what, you're gonna have to do a job all day that's the most boring, most stressful, you hate it, that's part of it. So I'm always working with parents and teachers and educators to, to, to be more honest with our kids. When we tell an 18 year old, you know, don't do what I did, don't work my job, do what you love, well, then the minute they don't like something at work or it's hard or it's scary or it's tough or they're afraid, then they'd leave the job because I'm supposed to do what I have a passion for. I think it, yeah, it is a miscommunication because I, I do say that, but I say it in a slightly different way. Okay. When, when the pain occurs, mm -hmm. then that's mine to say, stop, mm -hmm. what other way can I get there? Totally. So no, don't mm -hmm. quit the job, don't quit the, uh, the goal, unless mm -hmm. the job is completely but everything's But see, the difference wrong. is you've already stated that there will be some pain. There, I use that as an indicator mm -hmm. of what direction mm -hmm. to go, kind of like a bumper right. in life. It's like, right. in, to take it to extreme measure, if you put your hand on a hot right. uh, grill or whatever, mm -hmm. you're gonna wanna pull away. Mm -hmm. I now, how I live my life is I notice those feelings when something right. doesn't feel good, and I'm like, huh, that maybe th this isn't the path for me, but it doesn't mean that I say, oh, forget it, I don't, I don't even wanna go over there right. anymore. Right. No, I'm gonna go over there, but I'm gonna find another right. way. Like Bruce mm -hmm. Lee said, I, the, the line is so simple and so right, he said, um, be water. Water doesn't stop for the rock. Right. It goes around it. It goes right. under it. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I'm different, what I'm trying, to, what I'm saying differently is that there's people out there, there's speakers that'll say, you know, no pain, no gain. You have to break the rock to get on the other side. And they do have success. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't deny it. They break the rock and they mm -hmm. get over there, but it might take them 30 years. So they might have 10 years of pain right. and they get there. But hey, I'm saying, are there other ways? And there right. absolutely is, because you totally. and I could both drive to New York right now, right. get in two different cars, and we could take different roads, and we could right. both end up in New York. And I'm just saying, if the road's really bumpy, and it's bad, and it's breaking yeah, the right. wheels off your car, right. you might say, huh, is there another road? Well, my, Does my number sense? one, like the books I do and all the blogs I are, I'm called the quit it girl. And okay. I'm, uh, you know, I <laughs> the top 15 things you need to quit to be a healthy person, the top 15 things you need to quit. And so I'm known, like my speaker book is the top quit 70 it, things you need to quit. But I preface it, going back to you, I preface it by saying the most successful people in the world are great quitters, yeah. which is not what you would expect. But they didn't quit a job because it was hard. They didn't quit a relationship because it was a little uncomfortable. They didn't quit a lifestyle because it was too much work. Right. But they were able to let go, move away from, change direction when they were involved in something that was not at all in their best interest. Right. And so what you and I are both finding, I'm sure, is that there's people that quit things that they shouldn't, but stay with a horrendous marriage or a terrible boss or a job that they don't feel good or a lifestyle of health that's not good for them. And so a lot of my work is getting them to change. Like, how do I teach you to stick to some things that you're leaving quickly and yet let go of other things that you're like, I am, I'm gonna stick with this forever, forever until, yeah. that are killing you, sabotaging you, you know, destroying yeah. you. It's so, I did a show, actually, one of my episodes, one of my early episodes, it was like, how to quit and win. Yeah, <laughs> like, there, there you go. Exactly, well, then you'd like, like all my stuff. Yeah, I, I, I gotta yeah. look at more. You know, uh, Connie and I only just met uh, <laughs> because someone recommended that she needed to be on the show because we of all these things, because this is, um, these are the type of topics that I want to talk about, exploring what is, so people, mm -hmm. when they start looking at, oh, why am I not having the life that I want, these ideas can start, just even having an idea might say, oh, maybe I should look at this more. Well, you know? my, one more. Yeah, go okay. for it, yeah. Uh, my latest book is on happiness. 
but I didn't want to write the you know happiness with a smiley face on the front. Yeah. It's it's called happiness is serious business, and one of the things I say, which goes along exactly what you are, is the average person psychologically is unhappy, and they're unhappy because I don't have my soulmate, I don't have the money I want, I don't have the promotion, I don't have the house, I don't I have, travel. I don't have. So, and the average person right now, in our country at least, is believing that. When I get the soulmate, when I get the house, when I get the money, then I'll be happy. Yeah. But what I've spent my lifetime teaching is that's backwards. Happiness has to come first. Right. It, it's not the result, it's the catalyst. And that's the cool part. Right. If you're thinking happiness is the result of getting what you want or having the it'll life you want, come. it'll never come. Because, you know, if if you're angry and mad, you'll never find your soulmate because healthy people don't want to date you. And if you're angry and mad, you're never going to get the promotion because nobody wants to keep you in the company. Right. So I'm teaching people <laughs> and they go, well, how can I be happy when I don't have anything? And I go, you have to work your butt off for it. You're going to have to figure out how to be a good person, how to be a happy. And then all of a sudden it's like, wow, somebody offered me a job or wow, this guy talked to me at the bar last night and I've never had any, he's kind of nice. Right. So the challenge for me my whole life is how to help people feel and live like they have the life they want even when they haven't achieved the life they want yeah. because that's what's going to make it happen. It's, um, you know, people say money, I'll just say money, but you can put anything in there, money, life, what you want, whatever but money changes people, mm -hmm. that's what people say. Mm -hmm. You know, people that don't mm -hmm. understand what you mm -hmm. and I are talking about, but really people change to have money. Like you have to make that change, be well, happy. Well, go back to the three I yeah. said. Most people think either money's gonna change them, right. or food, is, yeah. so drink is gonna change them, right. or having that one person intimacy is gonna change them, when really it's all their messages about those things that are keeping those from the way happening. that it is it's beautifully said yeah so. <laughs> yeah we are um, we're so much on the same page and just say it in a different way which is a beautiful thing because some people are going to resonate to your voice and your words and some people well we have male and female yes we yeah. have a younger generation an older generation yeah. we have different cultures so really it's pretty amazing considering the differences we have that basically we believe the same thing absolutely yeah, and so. I'm sitting here thinking right now how many interviews I've had like this and and it, I almost oh, want to say like to the camera. Oh, not like you've ever had with me, nothing, right? Okay, nothing I just like want to make sure. Connie, but okay. I just want to say. I'm going to make sure that's true. I just want to say to everyone that's watching these episodes, how many episodes can you watch over and over? And we have a similar thread over and over. It, there's something to be said because about that. Because the truth is the truth. It is. <laughs> it is. It's such a beautiful thing. And I'm, you know, I'm so happy that you took the time to spend here. I, I just want to do one more thing before we part, if we never got to meet again or the audience didn't get to see you, what's one parting wisdom that you would give? Like, what would be the most important thing if you could just tell me one thing before we... One parting piece yeah, of wisdom? Yeah, exactly, yeah. What would be the one thing that you think is very important? Um, well, for me, it's stop thinking about age. You know, I ask my audiences, write down the number that you think aging begins and and you know, they write down 42, uh -huh. uh, 58, 60, 75, and then I say to them, whatever age you just wrote down, that's the age you're gonna start aging yeah. because that's what you believe. You know what I said in my head, I mean, this is crazy, mm -hmm. but I, I, I just said one or zero. Like, uh -huh. I started aging the day I was born because, yeah. I, you know, this is a whole life experience. I've uh -huh. seen pictures in my mind, and sometimes, uh -huh. even before I meditated, I didn't officially do that, but when I was younger, I remember being in high school and talking about having grandkids, and my friends mm -hmm. were like, what are you talking about? You're crazy, man. And I could see myself as an old man mm -hmm. in a rocking chair with all my family I always, me. I always and had 97. I don't know why. I always had, so, I mean, I have 10-year business plan. I, I've never, ever thought of it, but there are people in my audience that I say, write down the number when you think your mind starts to go, your body starts to go, you're not going to be, and they write down 42 or 51, and 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 so i think in today's society we have to get rid of that we are as viable and as healthy i mean what's the statistic that 78 80 percent of people over 62 
everything that happens to them is a lifestyle choice. It wasn't genetic, or and yeah. don't hold me to that, but something it wasn't it's a genetic. Lot. It's a lot. They didn't catch it. It was a lifestyle choice. So yeah. I guess my parting message would be, we're in charge. Right. We got control. It's, we don't have to hand our power away. We don't have to give it away. Um, uh, we just have to own it. And, right. and owning it means being responsible for not only your strengths, but for your flaws. And right. it's a pretty scary thing, but well, it can make all the difference in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then some sort of freedom comes out of that, that knowing, I mean, just or movement towards what you want. And again, right. being happy. Yeah. It's beautiful, and I, I look forward to digging deeper into more of your work. Oh, you want more uh, therapy? Yeah, that's what okay, I Okay, good. Just I'll be here for you. Yeah, Anytime uh, you need therapy, okay, just I'll give call me a you. call. Okay. Connie, it's Steve. I need help. <laughs> and I'll go, okay, well, I only have two hours. What's that's your credit not going to be number? enough. Right? Yeah, what's your credit card? Let's enter that in. Let's get that <laughs> right. swipe first. Well, you know, um, it, I always open up for people to share what they learned from our time together, and if they have any questions, is there a way that people can uh, get engaged with you or get in contact with you? And oh. I can put links too if you tell it, me later. But yeah, it's ConniePodesta.com. Perfect. Yeah. And we'll put that on the link, and you can share, and then you can put stuff with this video. Let us know. And what. I probably have a hundred things on YouTube. I mean, there's all sorts of therapy on YouTube. I mean, from why people have affairs to how to lose weight to marriage to family to leadership to how to make more money i mean it's all there beautiful. it's free just wow. you don't have to buy anything just go get it for free wow that's beautiful thank <laughs> you for sharing that and um and we're here let us know what you need to know and sometimes when you ask questions i make a whole nother episode about it and you know if there's enough questions maybe we can do this again so he wants another episode because he wants more therapy yeah that's, that's it <laughs> it's exactly it i need to work on those three he's things. acting like it's about you the audience but it's not really it's really about me right it's all about you it is me. all about it you is, <laughs> yeah it's nothing to do with anyone else hey, well uh, as i always do i part is remember choose gratitude and create freedom thank you for being here okay yeah.